Hey, good evening once again, everybody. Welcome back to Fenway Park for the first of three between the Red Sox and the Toronto Blue Jays. The Orioles just leaving town and another American League East foe here for the Red Sox tonight on a cool evening at Fenway Park on this Labor Day as the Red Sox here sending Dice K. Matsuzaka to the mound. And Jerry, look at the standings of the really surprising thing. We kind of forgot about the Toronto Blue Jays with the Red Sox battling with the Yankees. The Blue Jays are now 70 and 66. And as far as the wild card goes, they are in the mix. They're five and a half games back of the Yankees to begin the day. I was not aware of that fact until Tom Karen told me right at the pregame show. And uh, yes, so they do have something to fight for. There's no question about that. And plus we saw the Yankees lose again today, Seattle. So that's a that's a very tight race. The Tigers still two and a half back, but not playing good baseball. And there's the Blue Jays only five down. So uh, there are still some big games remaining for Toronto. Red Sox take the field. So let's check out the visiting Blue Jays starting lineup brought to you by Rico. Leading it off in in center field is Vernon Wells. Matt Stairs in left. It's Alex Rios in right field. Frank Thomas, the designated hitter. Troy Gloss at third base. Lyle Overbay at first base with Aaron Hill at second base batting seventh. Greg Zahn does the catching. He bats eighth. And John McDonald at shortstop bats ninth. Infinity brings us the starting pitcher and on the mound tonight for the Red Sox. Dice K. Matsuzaka. Well, this will be start number 28 for Dice K. He is 13 and 11 on the season. The 3.88 ERA. 174 strikeouts puts him fifth in the league in that category. Of course, winless in his last four outings and no decision against the Orioles and then losing games against Tampa Bay twice and the New York Yankees last time out. It's the uh, third start this year. He's had three starts, I should say, this year against Toronto with a 2 and one record and a 3.32 ERA. In 19 innings, seven earned runs. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by your Boston area Lexus dealers. They are third in the league with 72 errors on the season. Mike Lowell will be at third base. Julio Lugo, the shortstop. Dustin Pedroyer at second. And Eric Hinsky at first base. Left to right, Jacoby Ellsbury. Coco Crisp and J.D. Drew. And Jason Veritek doing the catching for Dice K. Umpiring crew, Mike Everett has a plate tonight. Dana DeMuth at first base. Kerwin Danley at second base. And Doug Eddings is the umpire at third. Where available, this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenas noches, amigos. Well, 83 degrees feels a lot cooler than that, but 40% uh, humidity. <laughs> That's because the air conditioning's on full <laughs> blast in the booth. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's very oh, warm outside. Freezing right now. The wind is out to right at 13 miles per hour. I forgot we had the David Letterman studio going here once again. I was wondering what you're saying. A it's cool night at Fenway. I was just out there in the pregame show sweating like crazy. It's warm out there. The freezing. Well, here is Vernon Wells to lead it off for the Toronto Blue Jays tonight. Wells at 254 with 15 homers and 74 runs batted in. The Sox have a seven games to five advantage against the Blue Jays this season. And last saw the Blue Jays on the 15th of July. Jesse Litch beat Josh Beckett. First pitch of this one is swinging a miss for Vernon Wells. Now well, we saw this last time down in Toronto Vernon Wells in that leadoff spot. They dropped him back down now back up to the leadoff spot. The Blue Jays are mentioned coming in now at 70 and 66, four games over 500. They're 11 and a half games back of the Red Sox. John Gibbons has got this Blue Jays team thinking about the postseason in the mix for the wild card. A strike over the inside corner, and it's one and two now to Wells. Wells with 15 home runs this season. He ranks fifth on the all time Toronto home run list with 156 home runs. Fly ball struck well to right, sending Drew back. Back to the track to make the catch late and lunge, and he makes the grab. Now, Brennan Wells hit that fastball that's away, a long way out toward right field. As we take a look from the blimp, and you'll see that uh, J.D. Drew goes back, 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 pedaling, and right to the warning track to make the catch. So 
So one down, and it brings up Matt Stairs. Stairs has had a very good season for Toronto. Which is in there for a strike. The number is very good for the former member of the Red Sox, Matt Stairs. Uh, 302, 18 homers, and 50 runs batted in. And hot recently, five for his last seven. First time he's faced Ice K. His last eight hits have all gone for extra bases. He takes the strike on the count 0 2. Play profile brought to you by Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. First home runs and RBIs that he's had since 0 4 with the Kansas City Royals. A chance to play here a little bit more often. Let a nine game hitting streak come to an end uh, a week ago as he takes a pitch inside. Alex Rios batting in the three spot waits on deck Toronto batting here in the top half of the first stairs lines it foul back into the seats now a lot of baseball finished already Labor Day a lot of afternoon games especially in the National League Yankees losing their game seven to one in the Seattle Mariners. So things tightening up a little bit in the wild card race. National League all done. Pedro Martinez pitching today. Got a win. The one two is fouled off to the left. Hangs at one and two. Got the win and a look at his line today against the Cincinnati Reds. I saw some of the clips of the game done just a few. He was about 88 with his fastball. But you know what. Pedro Martinez can win with a fastball at 88. His control is so good. And when he mixes in the breaking ball and the cut fastball and the change up, he can still get it done. Stairs staying alive, fouls it off to the right. This lengthy at bat continues for the Toronto left fielder. SK Matsuzaku's lost his last three outings. Losses against Tampa Bay at Tampa Bay, at Fenway Park against Tampa Bay, and at New York. The last three losses for Daisuke. One two is outside. Two and two. Towards the corner, now one hop up into the seats for a ground rule double. Well, Matt Stairs have fouled off a bunch of pitches, got himself another extra base hit. Been talking about to all the extra base hits that Stairs has had, he's got himself a one out double. And he gets the cut, cut fastball inside from Daisuke and cleans it out. Line shot that's going to bounce the one hop into the stands for the ground rule double, so he continues to be warm for the Toronto Blue Jays. So one downstairs at second. Here's Alex Rios. Rios at 309, 22 homers, 71 runs batted in. It's hard to believe when you look at the talent in this lineup for Toronto that they are 13th in the league in runs scored. That just was amazing when I saw that. 12th in average, 13th in runs, 13th in hits. A team that hit it just 259 as a team. Only Oakland and Chicago have lower batting averages across the American League. Breaking ball, and it's sent into right field for a base hit. Stairs will be waved around by Brian Butterfield. Here comes the throw to the plate. Stairs is in, and the Blue Jays take a 1 0 lead. And the throw to the plate. Rios moved up to second base. He drives in his 72nd RBI of the year, and the Blue Jays jump out to a 1 0 advantage. Looked like a curveball that time from Dice K, and uh, Rios does a nice job staying back and taking it to the opposite field. An inside out swing. The throw from J.D. Drew is going to be high up over the head of the cutoff man, and Vertek has to jump for it, stay in score. And of course, the high throw allows Rios to get into second base. 
You know, in 28 starts, Daisuke Matsuzaka has given up 15 first inning runs, including two runs in the first inning in his last outing against New York. And a run here for the Blue Jays, one out. Rios took second on the throw. And here's Frank Thomas. Thomas pops it up. In the right field, back is Hensky. In comes Drew. Easier play for JD, and he makes it. Rios bluff doesn't go, but he draws the throw. And there's two out in the inning. Not easy right now. It's twilight here at Fenway Park at the start of this ball game. And of course, uh, if you take your eye off the baseball, very hard to pick it back up. As we inch into September, of course, the day is getting a little bit shorter and twilight coming a little earlier in the ball game now. Two down Rios at second base is Troy Gloss. Uh, 258, 18 homers and 58 runs batted in. Lost four for his last six. And he takes strike one from Daisuke. With runners in scoring position. He's got five hits in his last 10 at bats. Overall, 257. Over his last seven games, Troy Gloss hitting at 391 with seven RBIs. Outside as Veritek tried to bring it back to the corner. It's one and one. Not missing by much, but uh, definitely outside as you'll see Jason Veritek catch it and pull it back. Late time call. Gloss back it out, getting the approval of Mike Everett. Daisuke going through with the pitch. Probably just as well. You see some guys injure themselves trying to stop from making the throw, but uh, he went through with it. Now, since the break, the Blue Jays pitching step leads the majors with an ERA of 3.17. That's been one of the biggest things for them. Certainly getting A.J. Burnett back. Anytime he has not been on the DL, he's been helpful to the Blue Jays. And he was throwing upwards to 98 miles an hour again in the last series against the Seattle Mariners over this past weekend. Yeah, and Akato's done a very nice job taking over that closer role and uh, doing very well uh, to close out games for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Cardo now with 27 saves. And A.J. Burnett is back. A 1 2 pitch to Troy Gloss, two down in the inning. Rios at second base. Inside, and the count two and two. Now, Dice K's missed two corners outside and inside in this at bat against uh, Troy Gloss, and neither one by very much. Nice kid up for his 20th pitch here in the first inning. Strikes out Troy Glass with it to end the inning. Toronto gets a run. Red Sox coming up. Last half of the first inning back at Fenway Park. Toronto on top, 1-0. Let's check out the Red Sox starting lineup brought to you by New England Dodge Dealers. Jacoby Ellsbury at the top of the Red Sox order in left field with Dustin Madroya batting second at second base. David Ortiz, a designated hitter. Mike Lowell at third base. J.D. Drew in right field. Jason Veritek doing the catching. Coco Crisp in center. Eric Kitsky, first base, bats eighth. And Julio Lugo bats ninth at shortstop. The starting pitcher is brought to you by Infinity. And on the mound tonight for the Blue Jays, it's Jesse Litch. Well, Litch making his 15th start. It's been an interesting year. He's been at the New Hampshire, Syracuse, and two times. Up with the Toronto Blue Jays beat the Red Sox earlier this season going six and two thirds giving up nine hits and a couple of strikeouts. Well a big day yesterday for Jacoby Ellsbury he got his first major league home run. And came up with a very nice catch as well. We called on Saturday. And it's three for four with a double and a home run in two games. 
first major league home run. Didn't have one in each of the first two appearances in the majors with the Red Sox and a fantastic catch in yesterday's game as well. Shoots this one in the left field of base hit. Kobe Ellsbury with a wide turn at first holds on with a single. Toronto defense is brought to you by New England Ford dealers. They are ninth in the league with 87 errors on the season. Troy Gloss at third base. John McDonald, the shortstop. Aaron Hill at second. And Lyle Overbay, the first baseman. Left to right, Matt Stairs, Vernon Wells, and Alex Rios. Breaks on doing the catching for Jesse Lynch. Well, Ellsbury two for two. Uh, 33 thefts with the Pawtucket Red Sox this season, a triple-A. There's Dustin Bedroya stands in and takes strike one from Jesse Litch. Bedroya starting the night at 324, with six homers and 42 runs batted in. The 324 is best among rookies. And it's good for eighth in the American League to start the night. Popped up foul ground should reach the seats over his zone and it is back into the crowd. Red Sox will not see overpowering stuff tonight from Jesse Litch but he'll throw the fastball the curveball the slider which I believe is his best pitch he actually was very good against the Red Sox in that first outing a change up and a cut fastball. Ellsbury at first base. Nobody out here in the Boston first inning. Toronto has grabbed a run in the top half of the first. Pedroia in a center field, a base hit. Ellsbury up 90 feet to second as well as collects it in center. First two of reach for the Red Sox in the bottom of the first. Now Pedroia is now 11 for his last 19, a five game hitting streak. Average starts the game at 324, which is eighth best in the American League. That's the curveball, and Pedroia right on it, right back up the middle for the base hit. Two on, nobody out. And here's Big Poppy. Red Sox DH. Hitting at 318 to begin the night. 26 homers and 93 runs batted in. Mitchell strike. David is three for his last 18 in the last six games. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And Ortiz finds himself down. Nothing in two. Cut fastball on the first pitch, a changeup on the second pitch to quickly get ahead of Ortiz. Jesse Litch has allowed only two earned runs or less in eight of his ten starts since being called back up again by the Blue Jays. Yeah, he hasn't had much run support. Swing and a miss. Elevated a little bit and he strikes out Ortiz for the first out here of the first. Yeah, you could see Zahn the catcher. He wanted the fastball up about letter high, and that's exactly where Jesse Litch puts it. So a cutter, a changeup, and a straight fastball for the strikeout. So two on one away, and here's Mike Lowell continuing to bat. In the cleanup spot for the Red Sox, and why not? 329, 17 homers, 97 runs batted in. And in the absence of Manny Ramirez, strike one alone. The league leaders are brought to you by Olympia Sports. And career averages against Toronto on top, Mike Lowell, at 369. Leaning, it's a ball outside, one and one. Mm -hmm. 
Mitch coming in with a 3.40 earned run average. It's the second lowest ERA all time by a Blue Jays rookie starter. Juan Guzman owns the record at 2.99. There's the pitches outside. And it's two and one. Mike Lowell against Litch, one for three with a strikeout. J.D. Drew waits on deck. Low to deep left field. Stairs looking up. It's gone into the monster seats. Three-run shot for Mike Lowe, his 18th home run of the year. And just like that, the Red Sox take a 3-1 lead. Now, Mike Lowell has definitely been the MVP of the second half of the Boston Red Sox with that home run. Runs his RBI total to an even 100 on the season. Fastball middle in and Lowell finds the first row of the monster seats. Well, with that monster shot, another child will be able to participate in the Mayor's Summer Jobs Program, courtesy of Boston.com, Monster, the Red Sox, and Nesson. Most RBIs in a season for Lowell is 105. He did that with the Florida Marlins back in 2003. And with that home run and even 100 RBIs on this season, it matches 100 RBIs that he had in 2001 with the Florida Marlins. And it's 20 more than he had all of last year. The pitch outside, and it's one and two now to Drew. JD, 254, seven homers, and 46 runs batted in. Blue Jays able to get a run in the first inning off Dice K, but the Red Sox have answered with three so far here in the bottom of the first. Well, in the absence of Manny Ramirez out of the lineup uh, with the oblique problem, Mike Lowell has certainly uh, prospered in that cleanup spot for the Red Sox. Softly grounded left side, John McDonald with a throw in time to get Drew, and there's the second out of the inning. Is that a word, prospered? Does that make any sense? Uh, I, I understood what you were saying. Yeah, I think it was after it I said it, it didn't sound right. To prosper. Yeah. Uh, yeah but then, was, it, was it used in the right way? That I don't know. But then again, I don't like grammar. He's so. done a heck of a job hitting four. He's done a real good job. I use lots of stuff to really isn't a word. I do. That's true. You're very true. That's yeah. uh, I, I love rangy, you know, but I don't even think that's a word either. You know, when I say a guy's got a nice rangy play, you know what I'm saying, but yeah. in a sentence, I'm not sure it really works. So you're asking the wrong person. Two down in the inning. The base is empty. Jason Veritek, the batter. Inside, 2-0. and oh. well, Listen, his last 10 at-bats since his home run in New York on Tuesday. And a six for his last 40, hitting at 150 over the last 13 games. Takes the pitch for a strike, and it's two and one. That sucks. We held at just five hits yesterday, the fewest in a victory since June 16th against San Francisco, and they had five hits and were victorious. And Sox hitting at 285 in 50 games since the All-Star break. And second in the league to the Yankees in runs scored since the break. And a strike and a full count. Oh. 
Swing and a miss. Veritek strikes out to end the first inning, but Mike Lowell's three run home run as the Red Sox on top three to one. Out so far on the ball game for Dice Game Matt Zaka, the first coming against Troy Gloss, and that's going to be on a fastball. Lyle Overbay will go down on the changeup and the slide at a Rios. So with the three tonight, 177 on the season now for Matt Zaka. Kobe Ellsbury, the top of the Red Sox order, leading it off here in the bottom of the third. He led off in the first with a single. And of course, came around to score. This one up the middle in the center field. Ellsbury's two for two. Well, they should love the rookies. They've been outstanding over the last few days. A change up this time and one big high bounce up over the head of Lynch. And up the middle for the base hit. That's her friend Kona talking about uh, the youngsters today. Uh, talking about how not only is it exciting to see these guys play, and he enjoys watching them play in the kind of the second half of spring training games after the regulars come out in the fifth inning. He enjoys that. But uh, this year has been quite a bit different. So many of them coming up in September. And the most enjoyment uh, drawn by Trey Francona is that they're helping win. It's not just guys coming in and watching them play. They're helping the Red Sox win some games. They have all been productive. Certainly this guy at the top of the list on Saturday night. We saw a nice catch by Brandon Moss yesterday. Kobe Ellsbury with his first home run yesterday. And two hits tonight. As Moss got the start in left field yesterday. Has to be amazingly satisfying for Theo Epstein to see some of these guys start to reach the major leagues and do so well as a group. Yeah, a lot of work goes into, uh, you know, drafts and trying to make good decisions on who to draft and where to project them to be. And uh, when you see it, uh, you know, develop at the major league level, uh, it is gratifying for the whole organization. To right center field. Rios won't get there. Drops in for a hit. Ellsbury going first to third. The throw is going to be not in time. And up to second base goes Pedroia. Little look there at the speed of Jacoby Ellsbury getting to third. Well, you know, they had no chance of throwing out Ellsbury at third base. And then they airmail the cutoff, man, which allows Pedroia to just walk into second base. That's a breaking ball up and away and just kind of drops it in the right field now. As Rios goes over, he's really got no chance to get Ellsbury, but he throws the ball up above the cutoff, man, and Pedroia can just get in the scoring position with no problem. So that's not good fundamental baseball there by the Blue Jays. Well, Pedroia now 10 for his last 16. He's two for two tonight. Second and third, Nortiz swings and misses at a pitch down and in. Ortiz struck out swinging in the first inning. The center field for Vernon Wells, who backs up onto the warning track to make the cut penny deep enough for Ellsbury to tag and score as Pedroia tags and moves to third. It's 4 1 Boston. Uh, behind number 94 of the season for Big Poppy. A uh, warm night at Fenway, and what breeze there is is blowing straight out towards center field tonight. That ball hit high, and it got a pretty good push all the way back to the warning track. Ellsbury scores with no problem, and Pedroia goes to third base. Infield now comes in for John Gibbons and the Blue Jays. Well, 23 RBIs in the last 17 games for David Ortiz. It's way at third, and they'll intentionally walk low. Now it goes to show uh, what the managers are thinking about the way Mike Lowell's swinging the bat, walking the right-hander to get to the left-hander. And of course, they'll go back in the middle part of the infield to try to get an inning and a double play. 
Third intentional walk of the year for Mike Lowell. So first and third now, one down. And it brings up J.D. Drew. Marlo Hale trying to get Drew's attention. He's halfway home. Throwing down some signs. Drew Kennedy, left-hander, up in the pen first for Toronto. Drew takes ball one inside. Two for his last 24, and 0 for his last 11. This a fly ball out towards left center field, sending Wells over, shy of the track to make the catch. Pedroia will tag and score the fifth Red Sox run. It's five to one, Boston. Now the one thing that J.D. Drew does not want to do in that first and third is hit a ground ball and of course have that double play to end the inning. He gets a pitch that's down but he's still able to lift it to center field to get the sacrifice fly. Not a bad pitch by Litch. But some pretty good hitting by J.D. Drew to go down and lift that ball deep enough to get a run home. That's the type of pitch that has double play written all over it. Two down low at first base and Jason Veritek strikeout victim first time as he went swinging one of two K's for Jesse Litch both coming in that first inning. They're on the ground right side Aaron Hill from the outfield grass throws out Veritek. To conclude the inning, two more runs for Boston. It's five to one Red Sox at the end of three. Five to one Red Sox on top as Jesse Litch is chased from the game. New pitcher on for Toronto. This, this call to the bullpen is brought to you by your New England Ford dealer. Visit your local Ford store. Go to NewEnglandFord.com to register to win tickets to the September 16th race in Loudon, New Hampshire. The new pitcher is Joe Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy's been around a little bit this season with Oakland, with Arizona, a 3 and 9 record, 4.77 ERA. That's in 30 games, 16 starts. Had his contract uh, purchased uh, on the second of the month from Syracuse. Only made two appearances down there with the Chiefs. Eric Kensky at third base. Julio Lugo across the diamond at first base. One down, last of the fourth. And here's Jacoby Ellsbury. Ball gets away. He's on running back to get it quickly. No advance. For either Hinsky or Lugo at first base. Ellsbury's two for two tonight. He's single to left in the first and scored. In the third, he's single to center and scored. Two, two and oh. And outside, three and oh. Jesse Litch, a starter for John Gibbons, going just three and a third innings tonight. Ball four. And a four pitch walk to Ellsbury loads the bases for Boston. Three times Ellsbury's been on now as the leadoff man tonight. Two singles and now the walk. Base is loaded, one down for Dustin Bedroy. Is two for two. He's single to center and single to right. He will score two runs. Top of the Red Sox order, batters one and two, four for four tonight. 
Talking about Ellsbury being on three times. Uh, you know, in very few appearances, but his on base percentage stands at 517. To left the base hit for Pedroia. From third comes Hensky. Lugo's behind him. Two Boston runs in, and it's 7 to 1 Red Sox. Third hit of the night for Dustin Pedroia. The top two guys in the lineup tonight have both been on every time, six times total between them. Three for Ellsbury, three for Pedroia. Pedroia now at the base hit to drive in two. That gives him his 44th RBI of the season. And the Red Sox now with a commanding lead in this ballgame. Well, that was Dustin's 10th at bat of the season with the bases loaded. He's got 13 RBIs in 10 at bats. With the base is loaded, here's Ortiz, who takes a pitch inside. David struck out swinging in the first, and a sacrifice fly in the third. There's a strike one and one action in the Toronto pen Josh Towers He's made seven relief appearances this season of course been used as a starter as well. Now you're stealing all my stuff when he comes into the game. Which is grounded foul by the Red Sox dugout. I didn't steal anything. It's in the Toronto notes. Well, that, but I'm going <laughs> to use that. You're jumping the gun here. You're going to leave me with something. I'll leave you the rest. There's still three more lines of Josh Towers. I won't say anything else. <laughs> Ortiz rockets this through into center field. To third goes Ellsbury. He'll be stopped there. Red Sox have him loaded again. That ball almost hit second baseman Curran Danley on a line shot. Watch Danley get out of the way, and then of course it gets by Aaron Hill. Almost got Danley right in the belly button. See the runner going back towards second base because of the line drive, so the bases are loaded. Mike Lowe's been on base twice tonight. Three run home run in the first, intentionally walked in the third. Pitch outside, ball one. He's at a 316 this season with the bases loaded, a home run. There are 20 runs batted in. A grand slam off Anthony LaRue with the Braves. This one tapped foul down the first baseline. It'll stay foul. Well, the Red Sox four for five with runners in scoring position tonight. They've made good on their opportunities. The book is now closed on Jesse Litch. Three and a third, seven hits, seven runs. He walked one. It was intentional. That was Lowell. And he struck out two. He's on the hook. Red Sox on top, seven to one. Joe Kennedy responsible for all the men on now. Ball two, two and one. Ellsbury at third, Pedroia at second, Ortiz at first. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two. Well, just three for 17 in his career against Joe Kennedy. Richard Kennedy spending time this year on the West Coast. Oakland A's, Arizona Diamondbacks. So a chop to third and through a glass. Right through the wicket. Salisbury scores. Pedroia's behind him. Two more Boston runs, and it's 9-1 Red Sox. 
Detroit Lodge never really got down on the ground ball. He stayed uh, upright, and the ball's going to go underneath. Ball had kind of a funny spin on it, and it almost looked like Troy Gloss thought it was going to bounce up higher than it did. See him stay upstairs, and then right underneath, and Gloss knows he made the mistake. He thought he was going to get a higher bounce than that. That's only the eighth error of the season at third base for Troy Gloss. Well, Lowell gets one RBI. There's the pitch up the inside to Drew. So a four RBI night for Mike Lowell. He's up over 100 RBIs on the season. Drew is granted a short and a sacrifice fly to center. This one down the left field line over his stairs. On to the track, and he makes the backhanded grab. Tagging and scoring is Ortiz, making it even 10. Boston on top, 10 to 1. Second sacrifice fly for J.D. Drew. Picks up his 48th RBI of the year. That won the center field and won the left field. Actually, this is a pretty nice catch out there by Matt Stairs in going into tough territory toward that foul line. Makes the catch on the backhand, but to no problem for the run to come home. As David Ortiz scores the run, so a huge inning here for the Red Sox. Now Jason Veritek with Lowell at first base. Veritek 0 for 2 in the game. Struck out swinging in the first, grounded to second base in the third inning. So Litch charged with seven of the ten. And now Joe Kennedy in the pitcher in the fourth inning has been charged with three runs of his own. On the right field line. And a foul ball. And Blue Jays are going to be deep into their bullpen tonight as Litch, their starter, just went three and a third. Kennedy being roughed up here so far in a third of an inning. Well, they elevate Vertek chases, and it's one and two. Came in the winners of six of their last eight. And three straight as they swept the Mariners. We're down 10 to 1 tonight. We're just in the fourth inning. The Tech slices it foul and it hangs at two and two. Coco Crisp waits on deck. Red Sox have got nine hits tonight along with their ten runs. Fly ball to shallow right. Up goes Hill. Rios coming in. And it's Rios who makes the catch, but a five-run bottom of the fourth inning for the Red Sox. They're on top ten to one after four. For the sixth inning back at Fenway Park, it's been all Red Sox. Boston on top ten to one. As Matt Stairs, Alex Rios, and Frank Thomas scheduled to bat here for the Blue Jays. Dice came back to the hill. And a first pitch strike to Matt Stairs. He's had a good night tonight for the Blue Jays. They had five hits. He's got two of them. He doubled and scored in the first. The only Toronto run. And a single to left field in the third inning.
upstairs, 39 years old. Born in St. John, New Brunswick. And he resides now in Bangor, Maine during the off seasons. Fouled off to the left of the count, two and two. Went to high school in Fredericton. Used to be an AHL team there. The Montreal Canadiens had the Fredericton Canadiens there for a long time. Played for Team Canada during the World Baseball Classic in 2006. Side of stairs, full count. Now Matt Stairs has been the biggest problem tonight for Dice K. The double, the single. Shook off a few, ready to go here. The 3 2 pitch to Stairs. Breaking ball misses for ball four. Stairs on for the third time tonight. Just the first walk given up by Dyske. Coming up after the game, it's WB Mason Extra Innings in Granite City Electric Extra Innings Extra with Charm Karen, Dave McCarty, and Tina Zavazio. You'll see Terry Francona's live post game press conference, plus he, all the highlights from around the majors, including Pedro Martinez. 2007 debut for the Mets against Cincinnati. It's all right after the game in high definition on Nesson. Pitch inside ball one to Rios. Ski holding on stairs at first base. Rios drove in the only Toronto run with his base hit in the first. And able to pick up his 72nd RBI of the season. Now 26 years old. Blue Jays first round pick 19th overall back in 1999. Jolts one foul down the right field line back and out of play. Last year he finished up with 17 homers 82 RBIs. This year more home runs 22 now on the season. It's a career high for Alex Rios. Center field, Chris got a late break. That's fallen fast. It's in for a hit as Pedroia went out to try to flag it down. Stairs heads for third and he gets there. Yeah, Toronto with runners at first and third. Nobody out here in the top half of the sixth. Well, Rios now with two hits on the night. Uh, base hit to drive and the run back in the first sitting. Now the changeup appeared to be toward the end of the bat for Rios and drops it into center field for the hit. Matt Stairs continues on in third base. 54 multi hit games on the season for Alex Rios, tied for third most. Single in the first, single in the sixth. First and third, nobody out. Frank Thomas, the batter. Thomas is flying to right tonight. And grounded out to shortstop. As Dice came out, Suzaka about to throw his 80th pitch of the night. To the third batter that he's faced here in the sixth inning. The glove of Matsuzaka from third comes stairs with the second Toronto run, and it's an infield hit for Frank Thomas. Good bid by Dice Kia. Tried to time his leap, but right off the top of the glove. 
And the Blue Jays get their second run. It's now 10 2 Boston. Something doesn't happen to Thomas very much. An infield hit right off the top of Dice K's glove. And with that hit, another RBI for Thomas. He is now hit in 13 straight games with that infield hit. So first and second, nobody out. Brings up Troy Gloss. Struck out swinging in the first inning, single to right in the fourth inning. Swing and a miss. Challenged him there, 93 miles per hour. Adam Jupiter tells me that that's the eighth infield hit for uh, Frank Thomas this season. That's wow. That's a lot more than I thought. He doesn't run very well anymore. He's had a series of leg injuries and foot problems, ankle problems. Eight infield hits, huh? Wow. Fouled off, and it's 0 2. Does walk to begin the inning a single for Rios the infield hit for Thomas a run scored first and second with over Bay waiting on deck outside one and two. Stays alive. Red Sox still have to return to Toronto for a, a three game series on the final road trip of the year for Boston, which will take them through Toronto and then down to Tampa. And of course, the last week of the season spent right here at uh, Fenway Park. It was Minnesota and Oakland at the end. Yeah, kind of strange. Uh, Central team and a West Coast team. To finish out the uh, home schedule for the Red Sox. Red Sox been pretty good at the Rogers Center this season, five and one in Toronto. Rios at second, Thomas at first base. Nobody out. A run in here in the top of the sixth. The dirt outside, two and two. It's up in a big strikeout night tonight for Matsuzaku, who has three strikeouts through five plus innings. He's had three 10 strikeout performances in a Red Sox uniform this season. So draws nearer to 90 pitches tonight. He's at 87. Outside full count to Gloss. The Sox have not had action in the pen, but may not be too far away. Ball out to deep right field, sending Drew back at the wall. That ball is gone into the Boston bullpen. An eight pitch at bat for Troy Gloss, fouled off a bunch, and then he hits a three run home run. And just like that, Toronto is back into this one. It's now 10 to 5, Boston. Uh, Troy Gloss uh, has had a couple of very good at bats tonight against Dice Game at Zizaka. He is now. Six for nine against Matt Zaka, and this is his second home run against him this season. 
Opposite field power. Second time he's gone the other way. The first time was a line drive base hit. This time into the Red Sox bullpen. Well, the sixth inning has been a trouble spot for Daisuke Matsuzaka. He's given up 20 sixth inning runs in 25 sixth innings. And as I mentioned, action may not be too far behind. It's not as Manny Del Carmen is up in the pen. Yep, the Blue Jays have cut the lead in half. Del Carmen loosening in the bullpen. Dice K, uh, 89 pitches on the night. And still without an out. Here in the top of the sixth. A walk, two singles, and a three run home run for Troy Gloss and the Toronto Blue Jays here in the sixth. Base is empty now. Here's Lyle Overbay. He's 0 for 2. Lifts it foul off to the left. Overbay struck out swinging in the second inning, bounced into a 4 6 3 double play in the fourth inning. SK, the ninth Red Sox pitcher since 1914 to record at least 13 victories in his rookie season. First since Don Schwall in 1961, who's 15 and 7. Red Sox rookie record in wins is 21 by Dave Ferris back in 1945. This one will find its way through the right side into right field for a base hit. And five straight batters reaching here for Toronto in the sixth. That home run that Dice K allowed, that was 21 that he's allowed now on the season. That's the most on the Red Sox pitching staff. Over Bay gets the cut fastball, but it hangs right out over the plate, and the top spin ground ball through uh, first and second for the base hit. Well, here's Aaron Hill, who is one for two tonight. A single his last time up. As he takes strike one from Matsuzaka. Nice here at Fenway has gone six and four on the season. On the road, a 500 record, seven and seven. Toronto now two and one coming into tonight's action. 3.32 ERA for Dice K. Looks for a strike in the count one and two. So had to wait a little bit tonight as the Red Sox been scoring some runs in their innings. Had to wait 26 minutes at one point, then 16 minutes last inning. It has not yet recorded an out here in the top half of the sixth. Five in a row have reached over Bay at first. To left field, Ellsbury. Back to make the catch shy of the track there. He is the first out of the inning. That's entering, interesting, Don. He's kind of cruising along in this ball game until the sixth. And of course, the first guy he faces, Matt Stairs, who had a couple of hits off him. He walks him. And they're now just now getting the first out of the inning. John Farrell back on that phone. I'm sure Del Commons ready. The question is, are they going to get somebody else up besides Manny? Probably just a call to see if he is ready. Greg Zahn's 0 for 2. He's grounded out to third base, fly to center. So we're going to miss. They are going to get somebody else up. Javier Lopez has joined Manny Del Carmen.
One and one the count to Greg Zahn. Lyle Overbay at first base, one down. Line to right in for a hit. Over is J.D. Drew to play it. Overbay is headed for third base. He will get there. As Toronto now playing first and third with one out here in the sixth. Well, that may be enough for tonight uh, for Dice K. Not fooling anybody in this inning. Well, Toronto into double figures and hits now with 10. And buying some more time here as Veritek heads to the mound. It's like a pinch hitter coming up on deck for McDonald Lind, left handed hitter. And that's why they see Veritek going out to try to kill some time. I don't know if a Lopez is ready yet. Not been up for very long. So Adam Lind will be pinch hitting here for John McDonald. Just a 186 hitter against lefties this season. As Mike now Lowell coming in. Yeah, Mike Lowell killing time. They're just trying to get about uh, some more pitches down there for uh, Javier Lopez. And there comes Francona. So, various stall tactics. And finally, now they'll make the change. Dice K having trouble here in the sixth inning, giving up four runs so far in the inning. Responsible first and third, and John Gibbons not happy with the delay tactics that we just saw. And voicing them to Doug Eddings, the third base umpire. Dice K's night is over as the Red Sox have a 10 5 lead from Fenway. In the midst of the sixth, a four run sixth inning so far for Toronto. Red Sox go to the pen, and it's Javier Lopez first out of the pen tonight. 51st appearance for Lopez, two and one on the season. He worked yesterday against the Orioles, pitching a scoreless inning against Baltimore. See the rest of the numbers for Lopez. Adam Lynn, the pinch hitter, pinch hitting for John McDonald. He takes ball one. Couldn't be very well be one and out for Lopez uh, with the right hand is coming up after this. So Vernon Wells and of course Del Common ready in the bullpen. Lynn Day, September call up his second stint with Toronto. As he swings and misses, one and one. Hit a 299, six homers and 28 RBIs. In 46 games with Syracuse. We'll look at the breakdown for him. Lefties, righties. Outside, two and one down to Lynn. Did a pitch hit home run back on May 27th at Minnesota in his first stint in the major leagues. Lefties actually have a higher average against Lopez, 265. Righties at 197. It's a piece fouling it off, two and two. Moon batting for John McDonald had been 0 for 2, flying to right, lining to right. Nice K. Matsuzaka responsible for the runners on. Lyle Overbay is at third base. And Greg Zahn's at first base with one out here in the sixth inning. Into center field, a base hit. And from third base comes Overbay with the sixth Toronto run. It's now 10 to 6. Nope, all the strategy to get to Lopez into the game against the lefty uh, falls apart as he picks up the base hit, drives in a run. Lopez got ahead of him too, tries the breaking ball and a nice piece of hitting there by Lynn right back up the middle. So the ninth member of the Toronto Blue Jays to bat here in the sixth inning and it's Vernon Wells. First time Wells has faced Lopez. He was jumping out of the way of a pitch inside. Two and zero. Oh. 
Well, against lefties hitting at 303, three of his 15 home runs. Left left handed pitching. Inside again, 3 0. And Wells very may have the green light here. Doesn't look for a sign. That stairs was trouble all night for Dice K. Waits on deck. He's got to get this inning started with a walk. Speaking of walks, there's ball four, and it loads the bases. Second walk of the inning given up by Red Sox pitching. And Toronto at one point trailing by nine runs. They're doing more than chipping away right now. It's back to a 10 to 6 game as Matt stares. It's a 290 against left handed pitching, dealing with Javier Lopez. None of his home runs off lefties. He has 18 of them. Ball one to stairs. With third in Zahn is the responsibility of Dice K. Matsuzaka, who has so far been charged with these six runs the Blue Jays have tonight. Two and oh. And it takes the advantage away, lefty against lefty. Once you fall behind like this, so two and oh. Stairs can be much more comfortable now with the bases loaded. Lopez has thrown 11 pitches and only three strikes. Stairs to left down the line. This is trouble. It's in for a hit. Jumps up into the seats. They'll give him a ground rule double. Two runs will score. And it is now 10 to 8. A nine run deficit in Toronto is back within two now. Terry Francona will go out and get Lopez, who is ineffective tonight. What a night for Matt Stairs. He's got his third hit of the night. And he drives in a pair of runs. He's been on base four times. Red Sox back to the pen. It'll be Del Carmen. In what is now a two run game. Number 33 for Del Common in 33 and two thirds, only 22 hits allowed. Opponents hitting 195. Last outing for Del Common was against the Orioles. That was on August the 31st. Pitched an inning in a third in that game. And you got the potential tying run at second base, so Del Common's got his work cut out for him. And then Wells at third base, stairs at second base, one out here in the sixth. Leos two for three in the game. He is single to right and single to center. He's driven in a run. He's also struck out tonight. Up the middle, Pedroy is there. He'll go to first for the out, but a run will score. And it's a one run game. It's now 10 to 9. Second RBI of the night for Rios. So this one went from being a laugher to a ball game all of again here very quickly. As Toronto has scored eight times in the sixth. Tying run 90 feet away with two down. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be one of those nights where, you know, you go, Dice K get to about maybe 90, 95 pitches, and maybe you could use guys like Breslow and Corey and maybe get Lowell out of the lineup. Well, not the case anymore. One run game. Dice K's night is over. It's been over for a while, but now the numbers are finally complete. Five and a third, ten hits, seven of the nine runs Toronto has charged to Matsuzaka. So five and a third, ten hits, seven runs. He walked one, struck out three. Javier Lopez so far touched for two runs. And he's still responsible for Stairs, who's at third base. The 1-1. One, one. 
Thomas takes ball two, two and one. Everett has been very tight tonight behind home plate. Uh, everything near a corner has not been a strike. And that goes both ways. Swing and a miss, two and two. A good changeup from Del Common. That, that changeup had like screwball action on it. Sinking down and in to Frank Thomas. Ball three full count. Tying run 90 feet away. And Matt stares. With two outs here in the top half of the sixth and eight run inning so far for the Blue Jays. To left foot foul down the left field line back and out of play. Let us go get a new bat after fracturing that one on the foul fly. Well, Javier Lopez didn't get anybody out. Give up two hits and so far two runs. Walked about it, didn't strike anybody out. He's responsible for stairs at third. The big hurt waiting on a 3 2. To left field, Ellsbury dives and makes the catch in left. Jacoby Ellsbury on the sinking line drive, able to make the grab. And the Red Sox will have the lead narrowly on top 10 to 9. Back at Fenway, 10 to 9 now. Last time Josh Towers was on the hill, it was 10 to 1 Red Sox, but an eight run top of the sixth inning by the Toronto Blue Jays. And it's a one run contest. The Red Sox bat here in the bottom of the sixth. Low lines went just over the outstretched glove of the new shortstop. And into left field, he's got himself a base hit on for the fourth time tonight. Jacoby Ellsbury making the catch on a sinking line drive from Frank Thomas to, to leave the inning and leave the Red Sox with a one run lead. We saw him yesterday making a diving catch in center field this time in left field. Much to the chagrin of Frank Thomas. The Blue Jays very nearly tying the game up as it is they trail by a run. J.D. Drew taking ball one inside. Got it out to short in the first. Hit a sacrifice fly to center in the third. Hit a sacrifice fly to left in the fourth. Fly ball left field struck well. Sending stairs back at the wall. It's high off the wall. Roll to third base on the wall ball double for J.D. Drew. Red Sox have runners at second and third and nobody out. This is bombs away here tonight at Fenway Park. Breaking ball here from Josh Towers and uh, off the top of that left field wall for J.D. Drew. So Drew with a couple of sacrifice flies tonight. Now the double. And the Blue Jays just come back with uh, eight runs to get within one in the first two hitters for the Red Sox. Reach base and have a second and third. There is action in the Toronto pen as Brad Arnsberg is out there. It's Jason Fraser. Well, everybody in the Red Sox order has at least a hit with the exception of Jason Veritek who's 0 for 3. Red Sox pen is busy. Also, Adeki Okajima worked yesterday up in the pen. Refresh your summer with Dunkin' Donuts new iced tea and the Red Sox by entering the Dunkin' Donuts Refresh Your Summer sweepstakes. Enter at Nesson.com today for your chance to win a VIP Fenway Park experience. Well, these guys enjoying their experience out in the Dunkin' Dugout tonight. 
Well, for those who like runs, this is your kind of game. 10 to 9, Red Sox on top. 13 hits now for Boston, the most recent for that guy. A double for J.D. Drew. Here's Veritek, who takes strike one from Towers. Veritek has struck out swinging. He's grounded out to second base and has fly to right. New shortstop for Toronto is Ray Olmedo who comes into the game. After Adam Lynn, the pinch hit for John McDonald, who started the game at short for Toronto. And Lynn would come around to score the eighth Toronto run. Left in a run with a base hit as part of that eight run top half of the sixth inning for the Jays. Veritek joins the hit parade with a base hit into center. Lowell scores from third. Here comes Drew. The throw, he'll stop about halfway down the line and retreat. As he realized he was going to be out at the plate, put the brakes on. And it's a run for the Red Sox who now lead it 11 to 9. Veritek completes the full cycle for the Red Sox. As far as hits go, everybody in the starting nine now has one. Good job by DeMarlo Hale. You're going to see Hale here wave him on at first. And then he gets way down the line. When it looks like he's got the ball, boom, puts the brakes on. J.D. Drew gets back to the bag with no problem. Never want to make that first out at home plate, so Hale waving him hard until he realized it was going to be a close play and then stops J.D. Drew. Well, the Red Sox now have 14 hits. Everybody's got at least one. Three tonight for Pedroia leading the hit parade. And here comes John Gibbons to get Towers. Uh, Jason Fraser up in the pen. Chris will be the next batter, but first a pitching change from Fenway Park. The Red Sox have gotten another run here in the bottom of the sixth and have a two run advantage now, 11 to 9. And this one far from over. In one of the world's largest providers of medical devices, supplies, <laughs> imaging products, and pharmaceuticals, is a proud sponsor of the Red Sox on Nesson. Well, new pitcher the fourth of the night for Toronto is Jason Fraser's into the game. It's 11 to 9 Red Sox. 42nd appearance for Fraser. All of those out of the bullpen. Only 39 hits and 48 and two thirds. 50 strikeouts for Fraser. Opponents hitting only 213. Comes into a situation first and third for the Red Sox who have scored a run in the inning. Josh Towers leaves after one plus. And we have five hits. So far, responsible for one run. He did not walk anybody, struck out a batter. So it'll be Coco Crisp who faces Jason Fraser. Coco has fly to right, fly to center, and hit one off the wall in center field. A double in the fifth. Twenty six hits between the two teams tonight. Fourteen for the Red Sox. Twelve for Toronto. Crisp dropping the bunt down from third comes Drew. Flip to first for the out there as Drew scores and the Red Sox take a 12 9 lead. In a game like this, so many runs scored, you know, <laughs> you expect the unexpected, and uh, right there, the bunt by Coco Crisp to get a run home. Not a squeeze play by any means, just dragging it down that first base line. And of course, once uh, the runner at third base reads, it's going to get by the pitcher, scores easily. So, first 
You know, as Chris gets credit for sacrifice there, one to three. There's Veritek who's down at second base with one out in the inning. And Eric Kensky takes a ball. Eric's been on twice a double. He's been hit by a pitch after grounding out to second base in the second. Sox scoring three times in the first, twice in the third, five times in the fourth, and two times so far here in the sixth as Hinsky takes strike one, one and one. The starter for the Blue Jays, Jesse Litch, lasted just three and a third. Saw Joe Kennedy for two thirds, Josh Towers an inning plus, and now Jason Fraser going to calm things down here for Toronto. As one out in the sixth. Inside two and one to Hinsky. So I have to talk to Fraser. They can decide what to throw to Hensky. John Gibbons, Blue Jays, trailed 10 to 1 in this game. They score eight times in the top of the sixth. And now give back two quick ones. The Sox had a Deki Okajima up in their pen getting ready. After Lopez and Del Carmen finally finished off the top half of the sixth inning after Geiske went five and a third tonight. Swing and a miss, fooled on the pitch. It's two and two. Full count. Fraser's allowed four earned runs over his last 13 and a third. A save here earlier this season against the Red Sox. Ball four to Hitsky down to first base. Just the second walk given up tonight by Toronto. Well, both managers are right now searching for somebody to restore order in this ball game from their pitching staff. The offense keeping the Blue Jays in the game tonight. Yes, it is first and second now with one out of the inning and Julio Lugo the batter. There's two hits from the number nine spot in the Red Sox order fouled out to the first baseman in the second and then the infield hit in the fourth and a single to left in the fifth. There's strike one to Lugo. Fraser was the guy they went to first when B.J. Ryan went down. Thought he could be the closer and uh, that did not work out terribly well ended up. Back in a regular role in the bullpen, kind of working middle relief. There's Jeremy Carter who's taken over that spot to the tune of 27 saves. Chopped right side. Hill will spin to go to second for one. That's all they'll get. And Francona thinks they didn't get anybody. I agree with him. I, I thought that uh, Omedo came off that bag early. Here's the throw to the shortstop, and look, Ooh. see where he catches the ball? He's clearly off the bat. Wow. 
I mean, there was no rush on uh, Hill's part because they know they're not going to get a double play. Watch Almeida have to leap for this, and he's not on the back. Toronto getting the benefit of the doubt from Kerwin Danley. First and third, two down. And Jacoby Ellsbury has been on base three times tonight. He's done it offensively, he's done it defensively. He has single to left, single to center, walked, he has scored three runs. Last time up, he did strike out. There's Lugo back to the bag at first. 28 steals for Lugo. Puts him seventh in the American League. Left to third, blessed the first does not throw to either venue. Call the block, I think. They call the block. Yep. From third comes Veracek. Red Sox lead at 13 to 9. Well, we've seen about everything tonight. Third base umpire Eddings seeing the block. Called it immediately. Take another look. Does he start up and stop? Sure did. The glove went up just a little bit, and then the rest of it stopped, and the rest of it started to come, and that's when he called the ball. Third block this year charged to Toronto all season. Red Sox have not had one. Those are taking a long time in between pitches. A strike, and it's a ball and a strike now to Ellsbury. 94 that time from Jason Fraser. Well, there's one that it was one of those near corner pitches that does go in the uh, favor of the pitcher. Many times tonight, this has not been a strike. Chopped up the middle on Mato. Around the bag at second, throws Ellsbury out. 13 to 9. Red Sox score three times in the bottom of the sixth. To 9, Boston on top. They've combined now for 27 hits. Red Sox have used their fourth pitcher of the night. It's Deki Okajima. Back to back days for Okajima. Came in yesterday pitching an inning. Had two big strikeouts in that game with a man at third base and one out. Back to back strikeouts. His 60th appearance of the season. 55 strikeouts, 16 walks, and 63 and two th in the third innings, excuse me. Now, it looked like that uh, Francona was hoping to get through the seventh with. Del Common and have Okajima come in in the eighth inning did not happen and here he is in the seventh with Timlin loosening up behind him. Greg Zahn's the batter, the Toronto catcher. He's grounded out to third base, fly to center, single, and scored a run. 0 for 2 in his brief time against the Deki Okajima. Strike one to Zahn. Troy Gloss at second base, Aaron Hill at first base. Well, Del Carmen went an inning giving up a hit. He was responsible for Gloss at second, Hill at first. Get back and out of play. 
Zahn high a batting average from the right side. We can see the power coming from the left side. All eight home runs as a left-handed hitter. Two to Zahn. To left field, struck well, sending Ellsbury back onto the track. That's off the scoreboard. Gloss going to try and score from second base. No throw to the plate, and it's an RBI double for Greg Zahn off the scoreboard and left. And it's now 13 to 10, Boston on top. Well, Greg Zahn puts a good battle on Okajima as he takes the ball that's down in the zone. Split fingered fastball from Okajima and just lifts it right off uh, the bottom of that scoreboard out in left field. So Zahn's got a couple of hits on the night. Ellsbury looked a little bit unsure going back there because the ball was more of a line than a fly ball. And second and third with one out. It's the first at bat of the year for Almedo from the right side of the plate at the major league level. Switch hitter. Took over defensively last inning for Toronto at shortstop after Adam Lynn. Uh, pitch hit for John McDonald in the sixth. You know, a 263 hitter, no homers, no runs batted in. Sit safely in four or five starts this season for Toronto. On the ground, and Lowell spins and comes home with it. Burks up with Chase Hill back, and Lowell will pry the tag. Well, with the Blue Jays closing the gap again, Lowell elects to come home to get that lead man and save a run. Perfectly executed as Lowell gets him going back. Excuse me, Veritek gets him going back to third, and Lowell applies the tag. So it's first and second now. Zahn at second base. Almedo reaching on the fielder's choice at first. And it's back up top for Vernon Wells. Toronto with 14 hits. Uh, Scott Downs, the left hander, is up. Ortiz scheduled to bat second in the bottom half of this inning. Strike one to Wells. Toronto has 14 hits. Wells does not have one. Although he has reached base twice, reaching on a fielder's choice in the fifth and walking in the sixth inning, but he's not have a base hit tonight. Fly to right, line to center. As Veritek heads out, talk to Okajima. Well, the best view of tonight's game is from the Hood Lightship. Each time the Red Sox win at Fenway, Hood donates $1,500 to children's hospitals throughout New England. Hood has already donated more than $500,000 to help area kids and their families. It's another reason to cheer for the Red Sox and another reason you can feel good about Hood. Owen won the count to Vernon Wells with two outs here in the top half of the seventh. He jumps back out of the way, and it's a ball and a strike. So on its second, Almedo at first base.
Foul tipped when the catch was made. It's one and two. Go check out again. Again, that fastball from Okajima at 88, but it's about let a high, and Wells cannot catch up to it. First and second, two down. Tying run at the plate in Vernon Wells, who bats here in the top of the seventh. The one-two. Swing and a miss. Okajima strikes him out to end the inning. Seventh inning stretch from Fenway is 13 to 10. Red Sox tied for a sports desk update with Hazel May. Back at Fenway Park, it's 13 to 10. Red Sox on top as we head to the top half of the ninth inning. The closer is on right-hander Jonathan Papelbon. 31 saves and 33 opportunities for Papelbon. He picked up that 31st save yesterday against the Orioles, pitching an inning, allowing a walk and a strikeout in that ball game for Papelbon. Papelbon with 72 strikeouts in 48 in the third inning. Bottom third of the Toronto order expected. Aaron Hill, Greg Zahn, Ray Almeido. We're here at Fenway Park in Boston. Don Osillo, Jerry Remy, and Tina Savassia bringing you Boston Red Sox baseball in high definition and Adobe Digital 5.1 surround sound. Wild one tonight at Fenway. Both teams with 16 hits. Red Sox on top 13 to 10. Strike one to Hill. 95 for Papelbon. Aaron Hill with two hits tonight. Single to left in the fifth. Single to center in the seventh. He's flied out twice. Oh and two. Jonathan Papelbon has worked ten and two thirds scoreless innings while converting all eight. Of his save opportunities in the last 11 appearances. So the opposition to a 142 batting average, best among American League relievers. That side ball, 1 1 and 2. He's converted 31 of 33 save opportunities, a 93.9% success rate. Ranked second in the majors, only behind Seattle's J.J. Putz. It's 37 out of 39. Strike three. One down in the ninth. 95 on the get radar gun for Pavel Bond and the high fastball to strike out Hill. Red Sox have had to work hard in this ball game tonight and using pitches they probably didn't expect to use. That's back to back days for Okajima and now Papelbon. One down for it. Greg Zahn has had two hits tonight. He's two for four. Take strike one. Red Sox coming in at 42 and 24 at home this season at Fenway Park, the second best home winning percentage in the majors, only behind the Angels. They're trying to take game one of this three game series against the Toronto Blue Jays. 
Well, they're not going quietly tonight, to say the least, despite a 10 to 1 lead at one point for Terry Francona's Red Sox. Zahn fouls it off. He's down one and two. Uh, with a win tonight, the Red Sox could increase their lead to seven games over the Yankees. Rookies losing today seven to one to the Seattle Mariners. The one two. Zahn pops it up foul. That'll get back and out of play. Russ Adams has come out on deck. He'd bat for Ray Almeida. Again, the one two to Zahn. Framed by Vera Tech ball, two, two, and two. Applebaum thought he had the inside corner with this fastball. Zahn lifts the fly ball down the left field line over his Ellsbury towards the seats, and that'll end up in the seats. Two and two to Greg Zahn. Got him. Back to back strikeouts for Papelbon to begin the night. Uh, been just about all fastballs and that at bat to Zahn. Zahn had a tough at bat and then Papelbon drops the split thing at fastball on him for the strikeout. Tumbling down. Russ Adams, the pitch hitter, with two outs in the ninth. Strike one to Adams. We've seen Matsuzaka, Lopez, Del Carmen, Okajima, Timlin, and Papelbon trying to finish it off tonight on a wildly offensive game. 13 to 10, Red Sox on top. The 0 1 to Adams. That's side 1 and 1. Adams at 231, no homers, no runs batted in. One and two. Blue Jays down to their last strike. Papelbon gets the sign from Baratek ready with the one two. Popped up foul ground. Euclid 
watches it go back into the seats. Applebaum struck out Aaron Hill to begin the inning. He struck out Greg Zahn. The one two pitch to Russ Adams. Popped up. Lowell giving chase. Veritek giving chase. Lowell makes the catch and ends the game. The Red Sox take the first of this three game series. A 13 to 10 victory for Boston in the first one. Valiant comeback tonight by the Toronto Blue Jays, but they come up short as the Red Sox take the first one.